we go. Here's a flake of obsidian. Um, not a very big flake, and it's not a thick flake, I know. Uh, you might have some thicker flakes than this, but you can see how thin this thing is on this end. And uh, most of this is going to be trashed and, and taken off. Um, but this side, you can see it's pretty thick. And it, this is the bulb of percussion that I was talking about. Uh, if you look really close, this here is the bulb of percussion. Alright, and you can see how it is bulbous. It's kind of like a hump, a round hump. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so this is actually where this piece was taken off of. So this actually went like this, and it laid just like... Just like so on the rock, on the original rock that it was taken off of. Alright, so kind of like that. So that was the original platform that the person struck, which was probably me, I don't know. But this was the only thing that was showing on the edge. There was a platform coming down. And they, they took their bopper or their hammerstone and they hit right here, which peeled this, this flake off, okay? And it leaves this bulb of percussion. Um, I was telling you how you can see, I'm trying to find, uh, see if I can see these on here. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to pick them up or not. Um, but right in here... There is stress cracks. They come down this way. I don't know if you can see them on this video. And then this lighting. I'm trying to turn it just a little bit. But there's stress cracks that come down. Um, there's also stress cracks going this way. And then you can see the wave of. Um, you can see how it waves through there. And that's the energy traveling through that flake. Um, when you have stress cracks like these, this was hit with a hard stone, a uh, bopper or a hard hammer stone, and it stress cracked this obsidian. So obsidian kind of works a little better with softer sandstones or billets rather than really hard um, things. But uh, if you don't really whack them hard, you can get away with using harder hammer stones and stuff like that. Um, I don't really use hammer stones on small little pieces like this. Uh, this is all pressure flaking here. Um, if the piece was a little bigger, maybe if it was this thick all the way through the thing, I might use a small hammer stone and work it down a little bit just till I get uh, about quarter inch to three eighths of an inch thick. Uh, and then I switch to my pressure flaking uh, just so I don't break the piece and shock the piece or hit too high on a platform because once this edge becomes thinner and thinner and thinner it becomes harder and harder to hit um, where you want to hit it at all right so when I was telling you to don't go up too high halfway I meant like if you're gonna like say this is the piece the thickness uh, you don't want to hit or put your pressure flaker any higher than halfway up this so if you go too high, it'll snap this piece all the way in half. Alright, so you always want to stay under the median line, okay, which would be halfway from the bottom to the top, from one side to the other. So it would be halfway. Alright, never go above halfway, ever, really. Um, there is an exception, <laughs> and that's when I'm napping slabs and I'm... Uh, or you're going to zigzag an edge, um, but there's more scraping off and putting downward pressure rather than trying to shoot flakes inward. We'll get to that later. Um, but I'm going to basically just use the copper nail, okay? Um, this is a piece of Delron plastic, um, but you don't have to have that. It can be wood. I think yours was wood. But um, this is what we're going to do. All right, I don't have any abrader, any sand, um, stone or anything. Um, what I'm going to do is I, I got this pad. It's got a wooden back on it so this doesn't bend. 
All right, that's very important. Um, if you use a pad without a sturdy back support, um, when you go to press on this, this whole entire thing can bend a little bit and it will bend your piece and crack it right in half. So support in the back of your pads are a good idea. If it doesn't come with a support on the back, I would suggest gluing one on uh, with epoxy or some um, something else, some other kind of permanent glue. Uh, if you don't have a pad, you can also use leather um, and just fold it up. Uh, but I like to do a fold in the leather to where the leather comes back and lays on itself. So it kind of makes a crease like this to where you have that open alley for those flakes to release from. So another thing with flakes is if, like say I have this sitting right here on this pad, all right, and I want to, if I, if I go to shoot a flake this way, all right, it's gonna go in and it's gonna go down until it hits this pad and it's gonna stop. The pad will stop that flake from traveling and you'll get a step fracture. It'll just stop and, and come right out and you'll have a very, um, uh, like a little 90 degree edge um, right there and they're hard to get out. You need to come in from behind or beside them. You can't drive flakes into a step fracture otherwise it just gets deeper and deeper. Alright, um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna zigzag this edge right here, just this little piece where this original platform was. Now zigzagging an edge is gonna go flipping I'm gonna do one or two flakes down here, and then I'm gonna flip it. And we're gonna use the platform created and go here to flip it back, 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 until we work all the way across that piece, and that's gone. That'll leave us with an up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down platforms going across this edge here. So I'll show you really fast how to do that. Um, I do that part on the flat part. I don't use the channel for that. And all I'm doing is just pressing straight down. I'm not pushing inwards. I'm just pressing down right on the end. I just grab the edge, pop it down a couple times. Please watch your eyes. Doing this part can shoot flakes all different directions. I'm gonna flip it over. Now I have a little platform that I just created. All right, now I'm going to continue in this way. I'm going to go trying to hold it up to where you can see it and do this too. Uh -huh. Grab this edge like that. I'm not getting it. I'm slipping. There it is. Flip it back. Flip it back. Flip it back. All right. There it is. So, gotten rid of that. It goes up, down, up, down, up, down. Now, to tackle this ball of percussion, all right, we're going to come in, and now I'm gonna put it in this little channel here. All right, I'm going to up flake. This is grinding my edge like a hammer stand would be grinding or an abrader. I just lift it. I'm lowering this edge by scraping upwards. Another way to do this is to flip it upside down and then you can scrape downwards. All right. Um, I just don't flip it in just upstrokes. Those upstrokes can flick stuff back at you, so be careful. All right, now I'm going to put my flaker halfway up of this as far as I can without breaking this. I'm going to go up as deep as I can, take as deep as bite as I possibly can take. 
without snapping this piece. Now, you're going to snap some pieces until you figure out right where that spot is, all right? So, um, but I'm going to put that right in there. I'm going to take a deep flick. I have this piece back here in my knuckles to where this won't shift backwards as I push inwards, all right? I have my fingers laying on top, but they're not squeezing. I'm not squeezing it. I'm not putting pressure down. I'm just stopping the piece from rolling up and down with these fingers, all right? I'm not putting pressure on it. So I'm going to put this flaker in here. I'm going to push in in across to this other side back here. I'm going to push to the back of my fingers. Push as hard as I can. Alright? And as I do that, when I push inwards, I'm going to push in and then build pressure and then just go like that with your wrist. That's, that's all it does is to take the pop that plate. Um, so you're going to go push inwards and pop. Alright? It takes a lot of force push inwards oh, I'm gonna cut my hand up back here let me trim this down a little bit so I don't slice my fingers up all right there we go all right let's get back to our platform there Push in. Push in. Pop. Alright. That sent the flake straight across my ball of percussion. Didn't go deep. I slipped off a little bit. Alright. Do another one right next to it. That was a better one. Okay, you can see right there. Alright, still didn't come over the hump. Just went to the top of it. Now I've created a ridge. Hard to see. Sorry. There's a ridge right here now. I'm going to set a platform up on that ridge. So I'm just going to scrape upwards to get all that thin sharp areas off now I can set again and pop flake come over here So, you can see that these flakes are coming across that ball of percussion. Alright? We're starting to take it down a little bit. Scrape up. To grind my edge. Lower my platform. Set my... Pressure flaker, push in, and pop. Come down a little more. Push in and pop. Push in and pop. Alright, so I had to delete some crap on my phone here. Alright, alright, back to the uh, bubble percussion here. Slip. There it is. If you keep slipping, you want to kind of get some of that rock dust on there from a grinding rock or a hammer stone. It really helps you bite a little better. 
Now I'm gonna flip it to the other side and work the other side a little bit. Start over here. This is in here. Wait a second. I'm trying to. and some of this off. Just raising this edge or lowering it as I turn it over. So by trimming this edge and just scraping straight down, I'm setting up platforms for the top of this now. We're switching everything over to this side, so all these have to come up. Watch your face. Yeah. Now I can flip it over. Now we can work this side. Almost. Not quite low enough yet. So I'm going to up, upstroke it. It's the same as downstroking it flipped. Uh, yeah. That was a good one. Let's come over this side where this ridge is running. It's going to follow that ridge, so always look for ridges if you have any. Set up that platform really low, bring it down as low as you possibly can bring it. <clears throat> Sure you clear your grooves because that will stop flakes. If it hits another flake stuck in there, it'll be stuck. There we go. All right, now we're getting it. See how it's thinning down? We're getting it. It's a little at a time. We just want to go where the humps are. So we have a little bit more of a hump here, and that's the bulb of percussion. I'm going to flip it back over. I'm going to lower this side back down. As low as you can get it, come as high as you can, and push flakes in. it over and try to bring this edge up create a platform on this ridge now just by trimming back this edge and just lifting that edge each each time you flake down it lifts that edge so I'm just lifting the whole entire edge by going down all the way across it Lifting that edge up. This is all just trimming. Just knocking the very edge off. 
going straight down. And you want a smooth platform. You don't want bumps and humps on your platforms because uh, when you hit it, it can go any different direction if you have uh, lumps and bumps. So you don't necessarily want lumps and bumps. Try to run this ridge straight down the middle. If I can get a good flake, it'll take a big chunk of this out. Pull this off my pants so I don't cut my hand. Ouch, damn it. I almost cut my finger in the back back there. Hold on. Take this edge down. A little sharp. Be wary of what's in the back too. That don't cut your fingers back there. Scrape off all the sharp stuff. There we go. There we go. Now that's better. Now let's take this bite right there. Go right next to it. To the other side. There we go. It's a bugger. I tell you. So, uh, alright. So, look here. See how it's thinning? That bulb of percussion is no longer there. Alright. We're getting flatter. We just gotta keep working it. There's another ridge over here. We're going to run these ridges. Alright, always run the ridges. Set your platforms up on a ridge. And that flake will follow that ridge. Until it hits a dip. Or a step fracture. Or a po ash pocket. Or uh, inclusion. Or whatever. A piece of concrete in the rock. You know, There's all kinds of things that can stop it. Okay, so, there we go. Now, I'm going to come out here, start getting rid of some of this really thin stuff. Now that I got that bulb of percussion pretty much gone, get rid of all that thin stuff, it's just going to break. If it's too thin, not even worth working because you're just going to break it. And you don't necessarily have to get cracker thin points. Um, a lot of natives and original artifacts aren't very thin at all. Um, especially in my area with the quartz that they use. Uh, you can't thin quartz like you can obsidian or chert or flint. Um, the quartz is just very hard. It has a grain in it, um, so it is very hard to work. Um, it's also very hard to find good pieces without fractures in it, unless you find it in the ground or deep in water. It's where it doesn't get frozen. Doing series of flakes. Flip it back over. Work some of these high spots again on this side. We're just going to keep going back and forth from one side to the next. And we're focusing on the highest parts at a time. And just work our way around the piece into all those high spots become flat spots. Um, another good one. Another good one. Another good one. 
You can feel it when it's a good one. You can just feel the release and pop of that flake. I'm, I'm up scraping create more platforms and to get rid of that sharp edge that sharp edge will kill a flake because all your energy is lost on a thin edge it crushes and crumbles it doesn't transfer through the through the rock okay so Getting thinner, see that? We've gotten rid of that bob of percussion. Now we're almost flat on both sides. Still have a little bit of a dip in here where one of those waves kind of dipped in the original. If you can see it, there it is right there. You can see that little bit of a dip. Um, they don't matter as much when you're going this way but they do matter when they're going this way. <clears throat> so now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start bringing the sides in, start to shape our point. All right, so we're just gonna scrape and trim, just straight off the top and just dragging off the side. We're not putting a ton of down pressure on the piece but we're just kind of dragging off the edge and scraping that edge off a little bit at a time. You don't want to go too much and you don't want to go too fast because you will snap the piece, especially the thinner it gets. Now, by scraping all the way down this edge like I just did, what I did is I created a, an entire side that is a platform. I'm just trying to get it as smooth as I can without a bunch of ripple bumps in it. I'll show you this here. Alright, so I raised the edge so the edge is up top. It's even with the flat part of the top here. Okay, so now when I flip it now I have a continuous platform right here. You can see that sloped edge. It goes all the way down the edge. See that? All the way down, it's sloped. So now I can do a whole entire series of flakes. I can start down here. I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven flakes across, uh, just like a slab. Okay, now we've almost created a slab. Um, so it's basically back to slab mapping again. Now I'm gonna go in to my channel. So my flakes release. I'm gonna start at the one end. I always like to grind that edge just a bit. And start our series of flake removals. You're just gonna move up uh, about it. 18 eighth of an inch each flake Make sure you get them flakes out of there until you reach the top Just like so so now We have a series of flakes you can see them series of flakes all the way on this side and they go halfway across the piece, just like they're supposed to. And that's done with the perfect pressure. You will get the perfect pressure later on. That comes with time. Now we're going to flip it over. Do this side, this edge. Um, actually, let's stay with that side. So I'm going to create a continuous platform all the way down this side now. Just by scraping that edge. Lifting the edge. You want this edge to be even with the top again like we did before. You want to get rid of all that really thin edge sharp material. Another good thing you can do 
Um, oops, got a piece of my finger here. That's normal. All right. Um, you will cut the heck out of yourself with obsidian. All right, uh, just to let you know. Uh, I've learned to work with it. I barely ever cut myself. Even when I do, it's just a barely a little nick like, like this here. See how I'm just barely bleeding right there. Uh, those are usually the as worst as I get. So, uh, but I have uh, I have sent flicks straight through the, to the bone in my hands before, <laughs> and I've also slipped with this pressure flaker and sent this pressure flaker into my thumb. Uh, yeah, buried it all the way in my hand before. Um, so that hurts. Really bad. <laughs> so be careful with that, alright? This obsidian can be really slick and slippery. Um, just lifting that edge. So we have a continuous platform, just like. So, so, that edge is all the way at the top. It's flat with this top. I can't bring it up any higher than what it is. So when we flip it over, all right, now we have that continuous platform again. It runs all the way down this side here. And I'm just gonna do a series of flakes again on this side. Remember, don't go any higher than halfway. Now you see how thin that is. So you don't want this pressure flaker any higher than halfway up on there. So it's a very small area to be able to do. If I go too high, crack. Right in half, it'll go. So I'm going to do this series of flakes. And then we will work on the reverse side. So this is the other side of side A, we will call it. And this is side B on the top here. So side A is underneath. We're always working the underneath side of the piece. And when you set up these continuous platforms, you can pretty much just pop flake after flake after flake. Straight on down. All right, there we go. So, now you can see side A. Side A has flakes going from both sides and they meet right in the middle. Beautiful flake scarring. Really pretty. Just like that. You can see how thin it is now. See that? This is side B. Now we're gonna go to side B. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna lift this edge. Side B is aiming upwards, so I'm just going to go downwards, scraping down. We're lifting that edge. You can do the same thing by flipping it over to have side A up, and you can do upward strokes, which is the same as downward strokes here, flipped over. All right, be very easy, be very careful. It's getting thin, it's getting fragile. Uh, the thinner and fragile it gets, the careful, more careful, and less aggressive you want to be. We're just scraping this edge, lifting that edge up as high as it'll go to where it can't go up high anymore. platforms it's a solid platform all the way across all right so we're just going to flip it we're going to have side a up now so we're working side b we're going to do a continuous flake all the way down this side here being very careful and easy i really should sharpen my pressure flaker um a sharper pressure flaker has a smaller tip, and the smaller tip can get in on a smaller edge without hitting the part that you don't want. So right now, my tip is pretty rounded, and it's very short. 
and I've been lazy and I haven't addressed it. This should be a point and it should stick out probably a good half inch farther than this. All right. Um, but I just haven't addressed it. So, And I've been doing this long enough to where I can use this rounded tip. I know where to place it to not break it. But um, I would suggest sharpening your tip as it gets dull. Um, it'll help a lot. I just do a little upwards uh, grind first before I flake just to that's just a grind just to get rid of that sharp edge um, if there was any left get all these flakes in there starting to get small upward flakes To do it for that side yep now we only have one side left so I'm going to put my side B back up and now I just work this side over here now I'm going to work this side okay um, this is side B facing up again we're going to down scrape the edge lift this edge up all the way down to a continual platform once again all the way down the piece we're just kind of laying that on top, dragging it off with a little bit of downward pressure, just so it just so it gets that edge off of there. We're not we're not trying to take off big chunks. We're just trying to take that edge and raise it and get rid of the sharp sharpness of it. because it's very fragile very thin now so you gotta be very careful alright that's about got it there there's a little spot right here in the middle there it is I know it's probably really hard to see on that camera as small as these pieces are. Oops, I dropped my pad there, right? Yeah, I'm just gonna get rid of that edge a little bit. Alright. We're gonna stick it back on here. And we're going to take that series of flakes again all the way up. One right next to the other. You don't want them touching each other, but just a little space in between. Being such a small piece, the bigger the piece, the wider of a space you would get in between each flake. Um, there we go. So now we have all, all four sides. Flaked, and uh, we have somewhat of a shape. All right, so um, now I'm really going to just shape this thing up a little bit. I'm going to bring this to a point a little more. Just by dragging and scraping. I'm not shooting flakes inwards. I'm just taking off of the edge and shaping to a point now. Come back around. Yeah. 
You okay, Lucas? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice swim back there. Alright. There it is, man. See how thin it is? Let me see if I can put my hand back here for you. There it is. It's thinned down. It's got flake scars over the whole entire thing. Now it's time to notch it. I'm not going to use this to notch. I have a notcher with a horseshoe nail in it. Uh, basically what I have is just a little piece of antler. And it's got a horseshoe nail in here. Alright, and... Um, this is a pretty small, thin horseshoe nail. And I use this one for obsidian. Um, other nails, this this will bend on harder rock. Um, and I have a little angle cut on that thing, if you can see it. So it's kind of like a sword tip. Um, it goes up and then it angles. Uh, I use that angle to get in to do my to do my uh, notches so notches I'll do on my flat part I don't use the channel I use the flat part of the pad I come over to the side here um, you need to learn how to properly uh, position your your notches so they're centered uh, that can take a little time but you want to start it and you just drag down on your edge a little bit and we're just going to flip it push in down you take three or four flakes grind a little flip back over one two three grind a little Flip it, take three more flakes, grind a little, and that's probably good for that one. So you see how we just put in that notch right there. So now we're just going to come over to the other side, um, position it where it needs to be, right there. Start it. You start out just a little bit, not too deep. Flip it. You usually only want to take three to four flakes and then flip. Oh, I just broke my ear, I think, a little bit. It's all right. You'll get the idea. Flip it. Grind it. Flip it. Now you can see that it has notches all right so that's how you notch it that's your arrowhead right there it's done boom just like that I did break the ears a little bit on those notches but uh, you get the idea That's how you thin it, man. I hope you get a little bit from this. I know it's not the greatest video. I'm going to do a better one for you when I get my GoPro back. Um, but uh, you can straighten these edges out. You can come back and um, come back and sharpen this thing and refine tune it with this with this notching tool on the edges. Um, you can really sharpen it up really nice. Get it nice and neat. 
with this tool here, come back and just do small series of plates, front and backs. This will really sharpen it up. This is how you sharpen older pieces as well. You just want to work that edge. We're not shooting flakes when we're sharpening. We've already thinned it. Now we're just sharpening the edge. said watch your eyes man wear goggles always a good idea although I don't but I have gotten uh, flakes and glass shards and things in my eyes before and it isn't fun it is not fun at all here we go Arrowhead, thin down. I hope you got something from this, man. Uh, like I said, I'll do another video for you with a better camera. We'll do some zoom up 